The Crypt Interviews, in association with Mayo Legend Point Castle Bar. You're listening to The Crypt, and today's special guest is illusionist, magician and escape artist, Steve Spade. So you're very welcome to the show, Steve. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. Well, Steve, I've been watching some of your tricks online and I've decided you have actual magical powers. It is just (laughs) mind-blowing. I I actually got that the other night as well. Someone was like, you're actually magic, what's going on? Um, (laughs) They expect you to tell the truth. I don't know, uh, yeah, get weird kind of requests and comments from people like that. A lot of people won't play cards with me or poker or anything like that. (laughs) I'd say so. (laughs) And how, How did you first get into magic? Um, I've been doing magic absolutely years. Um, my uncle was a magician, so I used to do stuff with him. And it was a typical kind of Irish uncle, you know, you'd meet him every now and again kind of thing. But um, as I just got older, I just started buying older books and I really started kind of diving into it and kind of got obsessed a bit with Houdini and started looking at like ways you could just kind of adapt old tricks and make them modern and stuff like that. So it just became a real obsession that became a hobby and then a hobby became a career, I guess. But that's really good. And like, when you're learning to be a magician, is there like schools you can go to or lectures or stuff like that? Yeah, there is There is lectures. Um, I've gone to ones uh, all over the world and stuff. And there's obviously a lot in the States and there's different brotherhoods of... It is, it's a bit stone cutter, it's a bit mad, but um, but there, there is there is lectures and there is, um, there's lots of different tutorials and things like that. I don't really do any of the tutorials online, there's a lot of kind of new age magicians now that kind of buy a trick and put it online the next day and not really doing it that well and stuff like that, but I like the kind of old hat kind of stuff and kind of dig it in to the old stuff because it's the old stuff, it's in the books really is, is where the good stuff is. Yeah, and is it is it hard like making the crossover from amateur to professional in that business? It has been, yeah. I guess I suppose it's one of these things. It's it's like uh, music, musicians and people in bands and stuff as well. It's it's hard to kind of break into the mainstream kind of thing. So you have to kind of get lucky, I guess, as well. I've done a lot of TV performances though, and bits and pieces and tours and things. And I've been lucky enough to perform with some high end celebrities and bits and pieces. I've been in, 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 invited to different parties and things. So yeah, it all it all helps for sure. Um, but I mean, I, I love that I can say that this is my job, you know. That's really cool. And like, as you said there, you performed for celebrities. Name drop there now some of the people you've performed for. Name drop? Oh, I hate this. Um, <laughs> Mike Tyson, uh, Rihanna, uh, Kevin Spacey. Deadly. So, yeah, some, some actors and movie stars. And a lot of Irish, obviously, celebrities as well and different events and all the, the toberties and all the rest of us. So, yeah. Well, you, you've been called Ireland's answer to Houdini. Couldn't you tell me about some of the most dangerous stunts you would have performed? Yeah, that's that's the mad side of me, alright. Yeah. Um, yeah. uh, I don't know is that is that you know a professional thing or whatever. Is it just being crazy? But uh, I've done yeah, I've done the underwater escape stuff. I do a lot of straight jacket escapes, and I was uh, I did a medieval kind of witch burning type thing in King John's Castle in Limerick. I'm from Limerick, and uh, I did that a couple of years back where I was caused up in in a in a on a, on a bed of uh, sticks and, and logs and stuff, and I would be burned alive at oh the stake, uh, like a Joan of Arc type thing. And I had so much time to get out before it all engulfed. That is crazy. You must be mad in the head. Can you bring up an insurance company? We're going, yeah, I'm doing this. <laughs> it's not exactly like getting a, a home or a car more, uh, insurance or anything. So, yeah, it's crazy stuff. It really is. But, but that's it. You I really put your life on the line. There's so many different elements in magic. There's everything from sleight of hand and, you know, kids performers and kids magicians and stuff right up to illusionists and escape artists and all this kind of stuff. So, the, you know, the specter is so, it's just so wide. Um, but it's great to, to kind of move up along the ranks each time. Excellent. And like, you go on tour and that. Have you any tours coming up at the moment? At the moment, I'm, I'm working really hard with the spade line stuff and, and everything like that and uh, just getting that really rolling. But yeah, I'll be back touring again, I'd say, in October. Um, so I, I do a lot of stuff around uh, Halloween time. It's a really good time. And I, I do seances and all that kind of stuff. And I tie in, um, there's a Houdini seance thing that I do nearly every year. I'm trying to contact Houdini. So I've done a few of those for different arts, um, you know, societies and things like that before as well. So. God, that sounds really cool. Well, you mentioned Spade Lion Productions there. Can you tell me a bit about the company and some of the projects you've worked on so far? Yeah, so the, the company kind of came from, from a conversation I had with, with a friend of mine and uh, Paddy Murphy, and he, he ended up that in the story, which became, the story became pretty much the short film that we did, which was called Ensnares. And we had uh, Kevin Coyley Jr., the actor, in, in that. So, yeah, it was it was like that. It was a short story that became a short film. And then that short film became a trilogy of films. And then we had Ensnared, um, a Devil on My Back, and then Ground Floor. And then I ended up starring in Ground Floor myself. And we brought over Tristan Risk, 
um, horror actress from, from Canada. So, Excellent. yeah, they, they, it all kind of it snowballed very, very fast. It went from a story being told to me in, in the car, just a, a conversation, to a, to a short film, and then a short film to a, tr- a trilogy of them. So, yeah. Excellent. Isn't it funny how things happen? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and it literally came and did this, the whole concept for, for Ground Floor, the one that I was doing myself, actually came from a, a funny situation where we kind of got, myself and Patty got stuck um, in, a, in a lift pretty much. I was pressing to go up, but we ended up going down in the basement, but we went to go, it was just weird. And I was like, wouldn't it be weird if you were stuck in an elevator with a magician and blah, blah, blah. And it just kind of came from that. And then it, we kind of gave it the element of horror kind of feel to it. So then it was, we were stuck in, in an elevator with kind of a demon magician of sorts and it just, it, just, it just went a bit out of control and then before we knew it we had gone for a shot Excellent Oh then your new one coming out is Cavity you're going direct in that Yeah I'm going to direct this one yeah yeah this is a, a, an idea that I started kind of running around in my head um, while we were shooting the other ones um, so yeah the story is really kind of close to my heart kind of in the, the whole kind of way I want to tell it so I'm going to direct it myself yeah Well can you give us a bit of the, the plot? Um, the plot it's kind of uh, it, it was a dentist plot. It's called Cavity. Um, we were lucky enough to get Carol Shield um, for, for the for the lead, and people would know him from Batman Begins, and he's in First City and RT and things like that as well. And he has his own theatre group and things. So we were delighted um, that he that he agreed to it. And that's another thing. It came from a conversation. I, I kind of told him a rough idea of the story, and he's like, I haven't seen that kind of thing before. So he, he seemed very interested. So yeah, we're delighted to get him. Um, the plot. It's kind of like a dentist that you've never been to. I guess it's it's going to leave people a little bit. Yeah, if you, if you don't like the dentist beforehand, you definitely won't like it after. <laughs> it was like the day I arranged this interview with you, I was actually going to the dentist and I was thinking, God, this is an <laughs> omen. Hate it, hate it. <laughs> yeah, even even the, even the teaser uh, trailer that we put up, uh, you know, people are, are reacting that way. And, and in the teaser trailer, I mean, it is a teaser, uh, the best sense of the word. It's just a little bit of a part, you know, the drill and, yeah. and, and, and a few screams and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's a very small taste of what the actual short film is going to be. Awesome. And where are you filming that? I'm actually shooting that in Limerick, yeah. So we'll be on location in about two, two and a half weeks time. Excellent. And you know, it's great to see homegrown horror. It really is. Yeah, I mean, we've been kind of stretching it out each time. Um, with, with the trilogy, we were kind of kind of open the ranks uh, a little bit as as we went along, I guess, and uh, just kind of put in not just the, the the shock horror kind of thing, more of a psychological horror kind of a yeah, to remind it a little bit. And I guess kind of my own ideas into the film, thinking like a magician and thinking that kind of way of leading people down the garden path, and then before they know it, they're in a different path. You know that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I know what you mean. They're the best kind of horror kind of thing. Uh, I think we've been adding a little bit of that to our short films which I think hasn't really been done that much before so so, but they still have a horror feel they're still scary but they might be more kind of freaky in your mind and make you really question it when you leave When then would that would you plan to have that out? Um, well we've had a couple of screenings and bits and pieces and I'm hoping to get them into a lot more in, uh, film festivals and internationally as well um, so I'm going to do that in the next kind of couple of months but yeah they, they should be out I hope uh, around Christmas time so hopefully that's awesome and then finally where can people keep up to date with your movies magic etc um, yeah so you can check out all the stuff and all links together um, from stevespademagic.com which is the website and there's Facebooks and Twitters for Steve Spade Magic and uh, Spadeline Productions as well so you can find everything there fantastic that's brilliant well, Steve thanks so much for joining me on the show today because I know you're fierce busy me. and I wish you the best of luck with the movie great we'll talk to you soon thank Hi. you